Hey, it's been a minute, quite a long minute. But what matters most is that we are back. For all the new members here, we welcome you to the Elevating Tribe. And to our old members, how can we thank you? Thank you so much for your love and loyalty. We really, really, really appreciate it all. To our new members, this is Elevation Chapter, the space that promotes human connection, spreads positivity to recover humanity. In my name, is nearly all. No one, absolutely no one, ever wants to say goodbye to their loved ones. Not at all. Even if we know for sure that where they are going is an answered prayer, we still want them around. Maybe let's say they are relocating to a new country we are still torn between them leaving and staying. How about when we have to say goodbye to our loved ones without expecting them to say goodbye back to us? How about that? In this video, we talk about surviving grief or rather living with grief. We shall share 10 types of grief for us to understand and know exactly how to approach these trying moments that we go through in life. Personally, I am currently surviving or living with grief. This month of October, it reminds me of 2021 when I lost a sibling and dame, 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 I can't say that it's ever been the same, never. Had I lost someone so close? Yes. I had lost my lovely grandmother, I had lost my uncles, I had lost people that were really close to me. But this particular loss, it hit a different spot in my life. We know, we now live in a fixed society where almost anything, anything is believed to be fixable. <laughs> but hey, grief is unfixable, guys, because fixing invisible things has never been easy because there are no tools to fix invisible things. In fact, I read somewhere that grief is like a wound, you know? It's like a wound that heals daily, but never really heals. And what's shocking is that in a single moment, it can reopen and it feels like day one. Though some days, it feels as if it's not there at all. So is grief. So let us share the 10 most common types of grief according to Distress Center. This will help you and I to identify the type of grief and also to know how to approach it. Remember, grief is very personal, where you find yourself navigating a roller coaster of emotions from sadness to anger to confusion to relief, and the cycle goes on and on, it never stops. Well, one is normal grief. Grieving has nothing like normal though. But what's termed to be normal is the grieving that's not complicated. The usual or expected change stages of grief uh, include one going into denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Mind you, we all experience this in different, in the different order because we grieve differently. So you catch yourself sometimes going back and forth through all these stages. For example, there are times that I'm so convinced that my brother is not with us. And there are times I get up and I catch myself calling his line. Yes, yes, calling him. I mean, whether it's denial or confusion, I have no idea, but I find myself calling and of course the number never goes through. In fact, one friend of mine said, why don't you delete that number, Nelly? And I said, I can delete the number, yes, but even if you wake me up at 2 a.m., I can easily call that number off my head. So what's the difference? But that's another stage that I go through, back and forth denial, back and forth acceptance, back and forth confusion. It's like as if he's somewhere, you know? Grief is terrible. It's just terrible. But what Distress Center calls normal grief is when you find yourself going back and forth through all those stages of grief. 
and then finally you get to reconcile with yourself and then you find yourself again into denial so literally that is the normal grief you're you're okay with it at some point and then you're not okay with it at some point and yeah that's the normal grief hmm. it's a hard topic today but we have to go through it and the second one is anticipatory grief now this is a unique form of grief that begins before the actual loss occurs Mm -hmm. So it's quite challenging because you find yourself sad, anxious, and though sometimes you feel a little bit of relief because, I mean, because of the hope that your person is going to get better. But normally, this happens when one has a very ill patient, very ill. Perhaps one is in coma or battling cancer or name it, whatever it is that, you know, gets to make you start having the grief when someone hasn't passed yet. The brighter side of this type of grief is that you get to be satisfied ahead of time, especially if you have done all that is required, all that you can manage, and still you cannot save their lives or make a difference. Then a little bit, somehow, somehow you, you come to terms with it. Though, I wouldn't lie, it's still painful because all loss is painful. You can find one becoming more accepting. We have heard of statements like, let her rest. She was going through too much pain. You've heard of that. You say, oh, I'm glad we were able to nurse him or nurse her. At least we were present. We did all that we could. Maybe her time had come, or his time had come. That's because before the person passed, you had already seen that chances of survival are really minimal. That's anticipatory grief. But even those people, they still need your presence. They still need your comfort. They still need you to console them through their pain even if they knew that that pain was unavoidable. And three is complicated grief. Complicated grief is the type of grief that makes one get consumed fully and it hinders your ability. It hinders your ability to function normally. This is more prolonged with intensity and usually someone keeps in denial. It exerts too much pressure, emotional pain, emptiness and disbelief. Uh, you find someone is always caught and aware while mourning. You, you, just, you just catch them crying. Maybe you're in a meeting and you know out of the blue they start crying. It, it's, it's, it's a complicated kind of grief. If you happen to experience this type, it's better, very, very, very advisable to seek for professional help. Um, you can go to the grief therapists or support groups. Otherwise, this has the potential to damage someone deeply. And if you're close to such a person, please offer help of being present, just be around them since they never want to talk so much about their pain, but they just you just need to be around them so that they don't have all these weird ah, thoughts. Yeah, you just need to be around them and whenever they feel like they want to talk, they can talk to you, but don't pressurize them into talking. It's, it's a complicated one, very complicated. Share with us if you have gone through the same. And number four, disenfranchised grief. Disenfranchised grief is the type of grief that happens when you've lost someone so dear to you, but unfortunately, your loss is not acknowledged or socially validated. <laughs> it hurts, actually. You literally feel unsupported, like your pain is invisible, or it's not pain enough to draw sympathy. For example, losing someone who has been mentally ill or too old, or a thief, or maybe someone has committed suicide. Name it. People, they kind of ignore your pain as if it's not that deep. 
I have to share this. It's unfortunate, but I really have to share this, that I felt like this when I lost my sibling, my brother. I went through this disenfranchised grief because somehow my loss and pain wasn't socially validated by the people or community I thought would sympathize with me and damn they were not nudged at all instead they needed me to pay attention to their needs and they forgot that I was actually grieving that's why we need to manage our expectations or that's why we need to pay attention when in pain or joy those two moments reveal a lot about the people in our lives it was a shocker to me and yeah you just have to go through it because the times of joy and times of sorrow they really get to teach us the hardest lessons in our lives mm -hmm. number five is the collective grief the collective grief is uh, mostly experienced by a big or large community after a tragic incident. For example, if there is a rebel attack like bombs or something, if there are natural disasters uh, like floods, landslides, uh, and many more, uh, this becomes collective because almost everyone is affected. So the grieving is like communal. So if people grieve as one, I, we, we have had this, I think, at least we have seen how people get to grief. For example, the Rwanda genocide, I'm sorry to use that example, but when the moment comes, uh, they all remember how they miss their people. The, the mood is different. It's, it's, it's a communal grief. It's collective. It's a collective grief. So if you have gone through that, maybe you can share with us how you handle that in your community. Number six is ambiguous grief. Ambiguous grief is a result of having no closure with someone. For example, when one goes missing, it's natural to believe that they are dead. It's funny, but we have heard of family members who just disappear or they live and never communicate at all. Some of their families get to believe that maybe, maybe they died and they start grieving. So it's this ambiguous grief that you have. I don't know, have you experienced this before? You, you could share with us, you could share with us. It's, it's a very dangerous one because sometimes we need the closure. We need to bury our person and know that, okay, this is my brother, I have buried him, I've seen the body. Okay, let's close this. But when it's ambiguous, it's also very deep. And rarely people really pay attention to that. But you need to give support to people who are grieving ambiguously. Give them support. And number seven is the absent grief, or maybe let's call it delayed grief. This is yet another complicated grief because one does not feel the expected emotions of grief at that moment when the loss occurs. They don't feel that too much. They are these dry ones. People refer to them as, oh, he's been strong. Oh, she was strong. But it's an absent grief. It's a delayed grief. And we need to know that having an absent grief doesn't mean that one was not too close to the person that passed on. No. We all have different approaches to the losses we encounter in our lives. However, even if one is experiencing absent grief, they still need you to be compassionate. They need you to be patient with them. They need your help. They need all that you can support them with because absent grief gets to be present in the utmost awkward ways and in unexpected places, you know, because it piles up and it, it's an outburst later on in life. They need your support. Pay attention to those that seem to be strong during funeral or after the loss of someone so dear to them and important in their lives. And number eight is secondary grief. This usually happens as a result of yet another loss or a primary loss that affects other areas of one's life. So one experiences a couple of losses all stemming from the original loss. For example, a wife can lose a husband 
and her in-laws decide to take away her children or property. Um, or in the mix of that, one of the children becomes uh, very agitated and they commit suicide because they cannot bear the pain of not having a father. There, the family suffers the secondary grief. Please, have you gone through this kind of grief before? Share with us. And number nine is traumatic grief. In recent times, many people have experienced traumatic grief. This grief happens when a person's death is sandwiched with trauma. In simple terms, let's call it a violent death. For example, if one was gang raped and passes on in the process of being tortured to death, or suicide, or robbery, name it. This causes traumatic grief, and because because I mean you keep thinking of how your mother was killed, or how your brother was killed, or how they go to die, the circumstances that they go to die in that are very traumatic. It's, 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 you don't only suffer the loss, but you also suffer the trauma that they went through. And number 10, cumulative grief. I really had to make this the last one because it's very trying. It's the most trying grief ever. This is the most trying grief one can experience. It occurs when multiple losses pile up before one gets a chance to deal with the prior loss. You know, it's, it's, it's very overwhelming. And remember, it's very necessary to grieve each loss separately. But see, we all experienced this kind of uh, cumulative loss during the COVID-19 pandemic, where we witnessed families, or even our families, going through all those multiple losses of our loved ones in a span of just a month, a week, days. It's very terrible, very, very terrible. So experiencing a second loss shortly after the first one is cumulative grieving. Sometimes it's also called grief overload. It's um, grief overload, definitely. It's probably the most intense and one of the difficult forms of grief to recover from. Ah. <sighs> I know at least you have heard of, if you have not experienced this, you must have heard of it or seen it happen somewhere. And now that you've gone through the different forms of grief, you need to know what resonates with your experience and start to address it step by step the way it's supposed to be addressed. One might ask, when do we expect to stop grieving? It's a tricky one because you cannot ask how long the dead will be dead. Literally, that's how long the grieving will also take. You just have to find mechanisms of to, how to cope with the grief. And you need to remember that grief is in the inside and mourning is actually what shows on the outside. That's why it's difficult to see how one has been grieving for even more than five years and more than I don't know how many years, they are still grieving their loved ones. But knowing the types of grief sort of helps one to offer a shoulder somehow to know how to handle the situation better than the one who has no clue on, on the types of grief and how to approach or how to offer support. Please share with us how you navigate grieving in the comment section. Our today's quote is from Jeremy Anderson. Grief, I've learned, is really just love. It's all the love you want to give but cannot. All of that unspent love gathers up in the corners of your eyes, the lump in your throat, and in that hollow part of your chest. I personally cannot put it any better than Jamie. Please find someone that you can support in their grieving. Look around, think about them because grieving takes forever. Thank you all for watching. I love you all. Let's all. Cheers.